Hello, Vermonters. Thanks for listening. Many of us have started to feel that the world is a little bit surreal. And the latest Vermont Department of Health edicts on monkeypox are some of the most surreal things I've ever heard. And it shows how we have politicized medicine and many other things with social justice fantasies, theories that are actually total bunk and divisive and horrid. And you can't say gay. And that's what's happening now with monkeypox. Now, monkeypox is a disease that doesn't seem to kill anybody. I haven't been able to find a single fatality, um, you know, God forbid. But generally speaking, it's a non-fatal disease. It's also a disease that seems to almost exclusively impact gay men. Um, unlike AIDS, which really was a heterosexual disease that fell into the gay population, and, and we may see in time that this is more similar, but it seems from the CDC and other evidence that 98 or 99 percent of all people uh, getting monkeypox are getting it th um, through gay sex, and they're saying so, but they cover that up. So this is what Vermont has done. So all of this just started in May. Uh, the first non-African case apparently was in the UK in, in, in early May. So in just two months, we're now offering vaccines in Vermont, they've just announced, to pregnant women and children under the age of eight. This is what the Vermont um, Health Department says. Right now, those who may have been exposed to the virus are being prioritized along with those who are at high risk. That means people who have a compromised, these are supposedly people at high risk. People who have a compromised immune system, have eczema, are under the age of eight, are pregnant or are breastfeeding. Uh, the health department, this woman Kelso said, the health department does not anticipate an explosive growth or quick spread of the virus due to the way people become exposed. Unlike COVID-19, the human monkeypox virus is spread from skin to skin contact. Nowhere in this release does the word gay come out. Don't say gay. In fact, in the announcement, the Department of Health is saying they don't like the word mon monkeypox because it might attach, uh, attach stigma. They don't say what the stigma is and they don't have another name for it. They're waiting for the World Health Organization to tell us what to call it. This is just ridiculous. Are we talking about science here? What, who cares what you call it as long as they have a consistent name? Who's being discriminated against monkeys or other people? This is all fabricated and it's deviating or it's taking us away from actually responding. We should protect gay men in Vermont. Instead, we don't even mention that it's gay men who are at risk and we're telling pregnant women that they're a high priority. And if you read the literature, you'll see if you read between the lines that the scientists continually through many different sites say, it's possible, it's possible a person could be could, you know, contracted this way. So because a person could possibly contract a non-lethal disease, we're going to start injecting all pregnant women and breastfeeding women and children under eight that sounds really insane. It really starts to make you question about whether the COVID um, vaccines also suffered from similar brain fog or lack of critical thinking. Um, in fact, one doctor says, there is not a cure for monkeypox, but there doesn't really need to be, Dr. Schaffner says. For the most part, this is a self-limiting infection and all of these lesions resolve over a period of two to four weeks, he says. Most people recover without specific therapy. Are we going to mandate a World Health Organization global crisis when toe uh, fungus starts to spread around or other non-lethal diseases? Is monkeypox a threat to the globe because it'll keep people with lesions out of work? Because that didn't seem to stop anybody with COVID. So, so what is really going on here? In fact, according to the US uh, Centers for Disease Control, 99% of monkeypox transmission is happening between men who have sex with men. At a news briefing Friday, public health officials stressed that few cases have been diagnosed in people outside the community of men who have sex with men. And even those outside cases have been related or adjacent. The first two children in the U.S. who were recently diagnosed with monkeypox, for example, are believed to have contracted their infections through household spread. Household spread. So gay men and children who live with gay men, apparently, maybe should get the uh, vaccine. But there's nothing about heterosexual uh, mothers, what about the risk to children of the vaccine? Separately, in a call on Saturday to educate doctors about monkeypox, Dr. John Brooks, chief medical officer for the CDC's monkeypox response, said there had been a case of monkeypox in a pregnant woman in the United States. Monkeypox can cross the placenta during pregnancy and infect babies in the womb. Brooks said the woman had delivered her baby and the child does not appear to have been infected. So there have been zero cases 
it's not fatal and you're going to tell people to get an injection and you won't mention that it's gay people who are infected because it might stigmatize them. Factually, everything's been sh turned upside down. As one com commentator wrote, a specific demographic is more at risk for contracting monkeypox than others, yet the messaging strategy surrounding monkeypox seemingly has sought to obfuscate this fact. And even when they do say something about how monkeypox almost exclusively infects gay men, public health officials couch their language by citing a non-existent stigma against gay men as the reason. It's, to stop, it's time to stop beating around the bush when it comes to public health. Dire ramifications arise when politics seep into health care. Well, this is nothing new because this happened with the AIDS crisis. And Anthony Fauci and others actually said with the AIDS crisis that everybody could get AIDS. I remember this at the time. People were panicked, but it couldn't be transmitted that way. And if you looked at the facts and now we know, oh, you can't get AIDS that way. That wasn't the tenor of the American conversation for a long time. And gays suffered horrible discrimination for that. And that kept people from treating the disease more um, seriously, perhaps in the heterosexual population, when they um, did stigmatize gays. But now what are we doing? Depriving them of the clarity of the information and the prioritization of treatment? The irony of this gets the greatest when we consider that Becca Ballant has said that there are people trying to pass laws in America to ban the use of the word gay. Now, that's not happening. She's actually said that, as I show in this article that will be on True North Reports. What is she really saying? Well, what she's doing is lying. Like she lies that there's a threat to abortion rights in Vermont. Everything out of the progressives here seems to be a lie. And the match is that apparently you can talk about gays when you're trying to protect gender hormone therapies behind children's back for young children in schools. Then you can go, oh, look, they're trying to ban gay, the word gay. Or maybe when you have a book like Gender Queer in probably every elementary school library in this state through our library association, with graphic pictures of fellatio, whether gay or heterosexual, the question is whether children, other people's children, should be shown graphic sexualizing novels at a very young age without parental consent. But Becca Ballant says that's the don't gay, say gay um, effort. No, so apparently you, can, you don't say gay when you wanna lie to people about monkeypox and tell pregnant women to be scared and get inje injections they don't need for a non-lethal disease. And then you do say gay when you want to obfuscate the truth about what's happening in schools and try to make it like people are bigoted and prejudiced when the opposite is the truth. So this has become quite um, revealing to people who have critical thinking. And I wonder if Becca Ballant will retract her false statement. I wonder if the Department of Health will start to admit that this is a disease that impacts gay people and that it's okay to say so and give them compassion and treatment and there's no stigma resulting. Uh, Thank you for listening, and I hope people will get more informed and start to question the authorities who are lying to us, who are warping the medical evidence, and are losing our trust for good reason. And by the way, these are the same people that wanted to inject young children with the COVID vaccine. And if parents questioned it, they were treated horribly, and so were their children. And that's happened all over the state. So we're losing a lot of confidence, not just in the Department of Health, but the Department of Education that goes along with Becca Ballant and lies to parents about critical race theory being taught in schools and lies about the hormone gender therapy that's already being done. Just go on the UVM website and look at the disclosure form for young children to fill out and all the risks that it lists for them, including infertility and, and diseases and cancer and kidney failure and heart disease, a lot of things they don't know. The FDA just announced this could cause brain swelling and there's no place on that form for a parent's signature. But don't you worry, just don't say gay. It's getting quite ridiculous how People like Becca Ballant and our Department of Health will use gay people for their political agenda and put all kinds of Vermonters, gay or not, everybody, including gay people, at risk to do so. We're getting tired of that. It's breaking down. Keep listening. Share this video. Please comment. Please like it. And please share it. Because that's how we educate people about the lies that they're being fed by their own government and their own media. Thanks very much for listening.